Hey guys, it's Em. Melania is quite the hot topic of Elden Ring. Whether you like her or hate her, someone's probably not going to like you. Even when I briefly mentioned her in my Elden Ring video months ago, it triggered a string of comments that misrepresented my entire argument so bad the person who made it started deleting me. Ignoring the general fan base's, for lack of a better word, toxic relationship with this character on both sides, I'm gonna give my little two cents about her, and all I'd ask is that you listen. I'll admit in my first video, I'd only beat Melania one time, which is why the section I devoted to her was so short. I wanted to go into some frustrations I had with her, but since I didn't go against her enough times, I vowed against her. Even that one time I won, I really wanted to like her, but couldn't justify putting her up there with my favorite bosses in gaming and I couldn't figure out why. After beating her a dozen times in solo and in multiplayer, I think I figured out why. Even after fully understanding her movement and being able to beat her most of the times on my first attempt, I still can't justify her as a perfect boss. Just for a little clarification, I'm gonna be talking about my experience with my build, which was with light to medium equipment load, melee attacks, and no spirits. For people who use heavy equips, spells, and everything else, I can't imagine a ton of experience will translate over to yours, but I still think you might find what I'm saying interesting. Melania is definitely one of the best from soft bosses. Love or hate her, she's not forgettable. She's a hyper-aggressive human type boss, which in this series are normally regarded as some of the best fights, but I think a good chunk of her problems lie in that hyper-aggressive part. She has a lot of little mechanics you have no way of casually learning because she'll usually be too busy rushing you down. And as I had mentioned in my first video, a lot of her strings tie into other strings. causes most players to panic roll and wait for an opening that she rarely provides. This is a common criticism most casual players have with her. Most bosses in this game will provide you with at least one semi-safe opening to deal with them, but on the surface, she has none. She functionally never stops moving, which is why you have to create openings of your own. You see, unlike most bosses in the game, Melania has very low stagger resistance. Meaning if you whack her with pretty much any weapon that isn't a knife, you'll probably knock her out of whatever attack she's doing. I like this part of her kit, but it's not explained to the player that this is a thing you can do to her. And given she's the only boss you can knock out of moves reliably, it's kind of hard to learn this unless you either google it or go crazy and start brute forcing her 24-7. Which then leads into a genuine problem once players understand this. See, I think overall Melania's kit works. Once you've seen it enough, her moves are telegraphed, leading to a fun back and forth of you weaving her attacks and knocking her out of moves. Or, you can just repeatedly stagger her for a majority of the fight. Can't ragdoll her the entire time for reasons we're going to get to. Sometimes, you'll see clips of players with heavy weapons or mimics who just make her stagger the entire fight like it's a JoJo beatdown. leaving her entire fight forgettable and her great moveset entirely pointless. Even fighting her normally, when you pick up on the fact that you could do this, it's not hard to stagger her so many times to the point where it's not even really a fight and she's just running from. On to the next point, some of her moves are armored. I imagine it's meant to help against her getting ragdolled like I mentioned before, which they don't really, but again, as for this point, like the last one, you'd have no reason to know what's armored and what's not unless you mentally snap and start wailing on her. Her kick, waterfowl, her second phase exclusive moves, and this long jump attack are all armored. Waterfowl and her second phase move feel like they make sense. As she jumps in the air and it's pretty obvious she's gonna do some big special attack and you have time to react accordingly. But her kick and her jump attack are weird choices. Both of these are reactable, of course, when you learn through trial and error, but it feels you have to learn it through trial and error specifically. While I feel most bosses in FromSoft games' movesets are straightforward enough, where if you're good at the game in general with things like good reaction time or understanding telegraphing quickly, you'd probably be able to beat new bosses on your first few tries, still with a little bit of difficulty. That's not the case here, especially since she has another long jump move like this. Despite the fact that they look different, on your first runs, you'd have no reason to assume that this is armored and this isn't. Let alone the fact that it's only armored to a point. Right before she swings, you can knock her out of it, but for the third time, you'd have to be crazy to figure this out. I don't even really know how I learned. Then let's talk about the big move she's infamous for. Waterfowl Dance. Do you know who two of my favorite bosses are in gaming? Yang from Sifu and General Ishin from Sekiro. The reason being is if you understand how the game works and mastered everything the game's taught you up to this point, these two are lightweights. You can kill them in three minutes or so, but if you haven't, these bosses will absolutely destroy you and seem really unfair. There isn't some magic way to make them easier other than to get good at the game and its core fundamentals. You don't need a special staff or some weird item to deal with them, just your key, block, attack, and evade. 
This point's further driven home by Yang straight disabling your focus attacks for his fight, and he should pretty much leaving no openings if you wanted to mash out gears against him, especially so on his inner fight. These two encapsulate everything the game's been teaching you up to this point, and now, you just need to execute. Melania does not work like this. I can beat her now, but as I have explained to you, you have to learn a lot of things exclusive to just her if you want to succeed. This doesn't make her any less fun once you have mastered her, but it doesn't carry the same core lessons the other two do. You may be wondering why I'm bringing this all up, and it's because Waterfowl is a big reason this fight could never reach me for me. It's an armored move, first of all, meaning you can't knock her out of it by traditional means. Second, it disrupts the pace of the fight to an annoying extent. The rest of her moveset is fast and snappy. Once you learn all of her little tricks, you're most likely pushing her back while dodging her attacks, like I said before. Putting in the fundamentals you've learned for her specifically, then she takes this stance, and everything suddenly shifts. This isn't like Ishin where his biggest moves had some sort of base kit interaction you could have with them. Same for Yang. When she does this, you have to stop and look at her. It's her turn, and now you have to answer to her. Now, there are a few ways to deal with it, but in line with everything else I was talking about, I'm sure you're tired of me saying it, but you'd have no reason to know what any of these methods are just by playing the game. I can't even begin to think how you casually stumble into dealing with any of these. If you try normally rolling it, you're going to die. If you block it, she either gets most of her health back or you die anyways. Running away is a 50-50 depending on where she starts it in her area, as there's some little bumps on it that will either let her slingshot down towards you, or she'll catch up before you can get away. It's all these things together that I feel is why so many people respect for just this one fight, because so many options feel wrong against this boss. Sure, you could Google it and find out how to deal with this, but if I have to Google how to deal with one move, I feel like that's a game problem. Some people say, ah, it's not even that hard to avoid normally. Those people are just crybabies. A, this is why Souls fans have the reputation they do, because neither of those are helpful. And B, even people who were into the series before, or people who were acing the game up until this point, still couldn't normally dodge this move. It seemed 80% of players, in general, struggled with this. And again, with it being so different than pretty much everything else in the game, and even in her kit, I don't know how that 20% of shriveled assholes that think they know everything see players as the issue for this move when it's just not conveyed how to deal with it in the fight at all. But regardless, as for after Google and just tearing around, I know of four ways to deal with it. One, if your light equipment load, you can roll back three times, and most of the times, unless you get stuck on one of the map loops, you should be able to dodge the first flurry, and then be able to dodge the rest by rolling into it. The second method is to equip a shield with the Vow of the Indomitable Ash of War, and then to time your ability just before she hits you with the first flurry. Then you can either dodge the next two, or tank them with the same ability. Third is, you reinforce your shield and block, which, despite her getting health back, you're at least a lot. And then there's the fourth and personally dumbest method. Throw one single frost pot at it. Do you see the problem with these methods? Three out of the four methods I named aren't base kit moves, and the fourth requires a very random item 99.9% .9 of people wouldn't have any reason to use until now. This is the ultimate I don't really care what you learn, uh, die, middle finger in her kit. Even though I enjoy a majority of her fight and can deal with this move consistently, it's still groan worthy every time she does it. Even ignoring the learning curve of her armor moves, staggering, and all of that, this move will never not disappoint me. And the other two examples I provided of bosses, they both have flurry moves. Yang's slap rush is one of the most fun moves in the game because it feels really cool to dodge or parry the entire thing and then counter react. I don't need three bars of focus to deal with it. He does it and then you deal with the move. Inner Ishin has a move with two unblockables in it, but it doesn't have the same problem Waterfowl does because it starts up relatively fast, at least faster than this move, and it is interactable if you learn it. It's probably one of the most helpful ways to get his posture down when you do. Had Millennia's Waterfowl been in Sekiro, which it literally is, but I don't think anyone attacks you with it, it would probably be one of the most fun attacks in the game due to its parry system. If it was in Sifu, I'd imagine it'd be some high-low dodge mix, similar to Kuroki's, but way faster. In here, it feels like an annoyance you have to deal with in an otherwise great fight. As I'm sure you can tell from what I've been saying this whole time, I like her boss. I really do. She's so close to being perfect. Even disregarding all of her flaws, she's still a fun fight, but for a different reason unlike the other two. Melania kind of just makes her own game and you have to learn it from scratch. She's still in the upper tier of Demon Souls Born Dies twice bosses, but she can't scratch the top of bosses in general, mainly for what I presented here. For the other two, I would gladly reinstall the game just to fight them. Disregarding the fact that every Souls game ignores DS2 existed, so if I want to refight a boss I have to redo half of the game again, I don't feel that same kind of love for Melania. 
but what do you guys think? Do you agree with me, or do you think I'm a horrible liar? As always, as long as it's respectful, I'm glad to talk to you guys in the comments, and I've been it, and I am out.